it is for the Ring of Honor Pure Wrestling Championship. And here we go. One, two. Crucifix roll up gets two for Gresham. That's the oh. lethal. He tried for it. Box lethal combination. Mm. Single leg through the back door. It's lethal look for the figure four. It's an inside cradle. Two. Just a two count there. Cutter. Oh. Cutter plants Gresham. Gresham. Hurricane Rana blocked by Jay Lethal. Yeah. Lethal has him in a Styles class position. He turns it into the Boston yeah, crowd. He's trying to force a rope break. And look at Lethal. Brings a Lethal here. He's trying to block it. Gresham's in trouble. We can have a new pure champion right here. He's, he's keeping Gresham from grabbing the rope. And he is. He is a good foot and a half. Wow. He had one shot to pendulum himself to the ropes and he gets there. That is the third and final rope break for Jonathan Gresham. Grabbing the wrist, spinning through. Sends him down to the mat, caught with a head scissors, Jonathan Gresham. Lethal Strap. tries to push out. Nice. Oh, he caught nice. Lethal. He caught nice. Lethal with a head scissor pin combination. Nice. The winner of this match and still Ring of Honor Pure Wrestling Champion, Jonathan Kretcher. A little frustration there. Mark Frisco, Jay Frisco. Bang, it's bang. bang. Oh. Cactus elbow. And a oh. class plants him, hooks the leg, two. Just a two count there. Well, if he'd be able to do it with, with Jay in mind. Yeah, yeah, Jay knew that he likes to use that as a step. Oh, oh, God. oh my God! Spicoli driver on the chair! Spicoli driver on the chair! That's Neck breaker! He's setting him up! Hooks the leg! That's and it! Gotta be in! Two oh. and three! Oh, wow! Just a two count there! Looking for the froggy! Oh. oh! Got it flush! Oh, and he grabs Mark, and he has it! Jay oh, Triller! That's it! That's it! Cover! Yeah. Two! Whoa! Jay Triller! Wow. Does he have enough to capitalize? Oh, Mark! Mark smart. Mark! Good. Rolling out of the ring! If nothing else, he bought himself what? just a little bit more time there. Oh! Drives the elbow through the chest, the heart of his own brother! And Mark Briscoe trying to get in. We're at 19. Yeah, Mark beat it, yeah. Wow, yeah. Mark Briscoe beats the count. The winner of this match as a result of a countout, Mark wow. Briscoe. You talk about calculated gambles, you talk about calculated risks. And Mark Briscoe saw the cards dealt in front of him, including that table. And he went for it full force. I'm Quinn McKay, and once again, I have a gigantic episode for you. Not only will I update you on everything going on in Ring of Honor, but we also have a big announcement and we'll close with a week-by-week -week exclusive match. It's Joe Keys versus the Bear City Bruiser one-on-one, -on -one, so be sure to stick around for that one. The latest episode of ROH TV was our 500th episode, and what an epic episode it was. The main event saw the most decorated tag team in ROH history, Mark and Jay Briscoe, do battle in a hard-hitting singles match. The brothers went back and forth and quite frankly beat the holy hell out of each other. And when it was all said and done, Mark Briscoe stood tall. The 500th episode also saw the ROH Pure Championship defended as the octopus Jonathan Gresham faced the franchise Jay Lethal. Through the ROH experience on our Facebook group and hashtag choose your honor, you said you wanted it and we listened. The board of directors also put a cherry on top by sanctioning a pure title match despite Lethal standing in the rankings. And we got a match that exemplified what ROH is all about out of it. So let's take a look at where the rankings stand right now. Shrugs off by Castle. Castle has him up. Bang the ring! No! By Woods. Woods has him. Traps him in the clover leaf. Body scissors. That's it. That's it. Woods lock does it. Wow. 
the winner of this match by submission, Josh the Good Woods. With 30 seconds left, Josh Woods uses the move. He used against PJ Black, the Woods Lock, the Cloverleaf with the body scissors, and that was enough. Counters the Bangarang, and Josh Woods picks up another victory in the Pure Division. And this time, Dragon Lee in the corner, knee exposed, incinerator. That's going to do it, Rick Abani. Hooks the leg, two, yep. three. Him slam. He's out. He's out cold. Two, three. Yeah, he's out cold. Again, ROH wants to thank everyone who made it possible for us to reach 500 episodes, and we're excited for many, many more, including the upcoming episode this weekend where we'll see the debut of Violence Unlimited. As you know, Brody King returned to ROH at the 19th anniversary with a group of individuals to battle La Faccion and Gobernable. Brody calls his group Violence Unlimited, and it consists of himself, Tony Deppen, Chris Dickinson, and ROH legend Homicide. Brody says that there's honor in violence, but no honor in the way that LFI do things. And Brody's formed this group of ROH's past, present, and future. And this weekend, they'll face the Faction and Gobernable in an explosive six-man tag team war. Let's hear from LFI now. Miranos, do we look worried? Do we look concerned to you? LFI is a weapon. LFI is a force, and sometimes even the best weapons can jam. Even the best, strongest forces can be slowed. Because of the incapacitation of the young dragon, the former two-time television champion steps in to represent the family. Because of the incapacitation of the young dragon, the patriarch, la bestia del ring, steps in to defend the tag titles. So it doesn't matter sometimes how good you are. It doesn't matter sometimes how tough you are. If you are not prepared, you'll lose. And that's what happened. We just were not prepared. So you know what? Golf clap for the foundation. You won, you have something, but you won't have it for long. Oh! <laughs> And I forgot, <laughs> Brody King. Brody King has emerged from underneath the rocks or the slime or the dumpster, wherever you come from. And you brought a whole bunch of garbage from with wherever you came from with you. Homicide, homicide, I know you, man. Homicide, we got history, dog. But I promise you, I'll leave you where I find you the next time I see you. And Chris Dickinson, Chris Dickinson, there are no women to hit with chairs in this company. So when you see us, you'll be squaring up with men. Do not forget, make no mistake, we took a stumble at the anniversary show. But the main goal, the ultimate power, still lies with the ultimate guy. The number one guy, and who is it? Aquí en es el ingobernable mayor. Whether you like it or not, wherever I face, the result is inevitable. This is our time. This is our company. We don't care about anyone. Call it whatever. 
a toda la bola de perros. Vamos a desmadrar, because la facción ingobernable is the past, the present, and the future. Do you understand me? I don't think so. No pasa nada, perros. La humillación les espera. Also on the next episode of ROH TV, we'll see two impressive athletes who have a lot of eyes on them go one-on-one -on -one as the Mile High Magnum takes on Infinite Eli Isom. Eli's not been pinned or submitted since returning to ROH, and Draper is coming off of the biggest match of his career against ROH Pure Champion Jonathan Gresham. And despite his arrogant and egotistical attitude, Dak earned the respect of the fans and his peers alike. Let's hear from both of these athletes right now. When I think Eli Isom versus Dak Draper, I think similarities. Because Eli and I do have some similarities. Actually, we have a lot of similarities. We're both great athletes, we're charismatic, very good looking, and people love us. But we're different in where we find our happiness. I find my happiness when I'm moving up the card, when I'm becoming more and more successful to get more and more attention from people for how successful I am. Eli, is just as happy if he's in the main event, as he is when he's on the first match, as he is if he's in the back just helping out. He's happy to be here because he loves wrestling so much, he's happy to participate. Well, Eli, guess what? I've got great news for you. Tonight, we can both leave happy because as I stand over you, victorious, looking down on you, I'll have a little present for you, a little token of your participation. See you in our match. Shame on you. When I heard I was wrestling Dak Draper, I was thrilled. See, Dak Draper is one of the most arrogant people I've ever met in my entire life. I don't know, maybe he has the right to be. As you look at him, he's big, he's tall, he's fast, he's strong, he's everything that you would think he is. But Dak Draper, you don't have the right to belittle people the way that you do. I mean, participation trophies, are you kidding me? And you said, you said I was happy to be here. And you're damn right I'm happy to be here because Ring of Honor is the best wrestling on the planet. But I'm not here to participate. No, 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 Dak Draper, I am here to humble you. And those are not empty words. That is a promise. After losing his Pure Championship match against Jonathan Gresham, Dak Draper put in an application to leave the Pure Division and move to the Television Division. Again, this upcoming TV match will have big ranking implications. We've also gotten word that on the next episode of ROH TV, Righteous members Bateman, Vita Von Starr, and Dutch will be in the house. Probably a haunted or abandoned house, but a house nonetheless. We still have not heard from Righteous leader Vincent since his brutal unsanctioned match against Matt Taven at the 19th anniversary show. And it will be interesting to hear what they have to say and if they let us know where Vincent currently is, though... I'll be honest, I really highly doubt it. In other breaking news, in two weeks on ROH TV, the brand new ROH television champion, Hot Sauce Tracy Williams, has his first defense against Tony Deppin. Deppin has his second opportunity at the television championship and recently pinned LFI's Kenny King to keep him at the top of the rankings. It's the foundation versus Violence Unlimited with gold on the line. Let's take a closer look at this match now. Everybody is wondering why. Why did I align myself with Brody, Homicide, and Chris Dickinson? Since day one, I've been treated with nothing but disrespect. You know, I come in, I shake hands, I'm nice to everybody, I beat Kenny King, I get jumped by LFI. Why? Because I won a match? And I'm sick and tired of coming here and being pushed around. So I align myself with the baddest guys in professional wrestling today. We're the same way and we're cut from the same cloth. You know, since day one of me coming to Ring of Honor, I had one person in mind that I wanted to wrestle, and that was Hot Sauce. We have a history together. When we wrestled, 
You beat me into the ground. You hit me harder than I've ever been hit in my entire life. You brought things out of me that I didn't know I had in me. You've done it to me in places that I consider my house. And now it's payback. This is not my first opportunity at the TV title, but that first time, I wasn't fresh. I had another match prior. So guess what? You're gonna get a fresh Tony Deppin, and that's the most dangerous version there is. Tracy, the entire Foundation's goals in wrestling is to purify every division. But Violence Unlimited, we're the opposite. We believe in honor, but we also believe that there's violence in honor. And we're gonna run through every division and take the titles, not for purity or anything. We're gonna do it for pure dominance. There's honor in violence, and our violence is unlimited. Ring of Honor's 19th anniversary was a historic night for so many reasons, some good, some not so good. The foundation came into the 19th anniversary promising to restore honor, promising to purify every division. We had our work cut out for us. It was the biggest night of my career, and it was one of the hardest nights of my life because I had two separate title matches in one night. But at the end of the night, I did walk away with the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship and the Ring of Honor Television Championship. However, what the Foundation promised at the end of the 19th anniversary was to show honor restored in Ring of Honor. And instead, at the end of the night, what you saw was violence unlimited. I know better than to think you can just say something's gonna happen in professional wrestling and it's just gonna happen the way you imagine it. We know it's unpredictable. We know there's tons of hungry people looking to carve out a spot just like the foundation is. So violence unlimited, you made your point. We felt your presence. You're here in Ring of Honor, we get that. But I'm gonna work even harder to hold on to this gold, to hold on to this power, because this isn't just championships to me. This isn't just prizes, this isn't just money. This is what I believe in. Ring of Honor, this is the place I came to show the world what professional wrestling is. That's what this means to me. So what's your vision of professional wrestling? Violence, yeah, yeah. Yeah, professional wrestling is violent. Professional wrestling is fighting. There's a pure way to do it. Tony Deppin and I have wrestled in the past, years ago, and since that day, Tony Deppin hasn't shut up about how hard I hit him. But oh, hot sauce chopped me in the throat. Hot sauce beat me up like nobody's ever beat me up before. But Tony, to you, when we wrestled, that night was one of the hardest nights of your life. And for me, it was a Sunday afternoon. I was doing my job. Tony, this is our job. Fighting's our job. They talk about how you want to provide for your wife, for your kids. Tony, that's why you're here. That's why we're all here. I see a different Tony Deppin since you've been in Ring of Honor. I see you stepped it up. Yeah, but you're not the only one improving. And you're not the only one with something to prove. The stakes are high for me as well, Tony. I got everything to prove. And in Ring of Honor, I've been making history. And I'm not gonna let you stop me from continuing to do that. So when we face off the television championship, it is gonna be just like a couple years ago, Tony. You're gonna feel like you're back on the independence because you're gonna be back in the ring with me and I'm gonna be whooping your ass again. That television championship defense will be a huge main event in two weeks and check out what's also on the episode. That's right, Flamita versus Bandito. We saw Flamita walk out on Bandito recently on ROH TV, and the two have had their differences since the 19th anniversary. And in two weeks, they do battle one-on-one, -on -one, which will be 
unbelievable. Now, as you remember, Mexi Squad lost their six-man tag team titles to Shane Taylor Promotions, which was kind of the start of the hostility between the Luchadors. And while STP has been on a dominant run as a six-man unit, Shane Taylor has had Kenny King on his mind. A couple of months ago, Shane Taylor received his long-awaited world title shot against Roosh. El Toro Blanco was victorious that night with help from fellow Ngobernable member Kenny King. With the history of camaraderie between Shane and Kenny, what happened at the end of that match was absolutely heartbreaking and completely despicable. Shane has yet to speak about Kenny since the incident, but the time has finally come. Let's hear from Shane now. Survival is a game of chance. Revenge. Revenge is a calculated plan of action. And Kenny King, what you did, it deserves revenge. But not because you cost me the Ring of Honor World Championship. I'm used to things like that happening. I was screwed out of main eventing Madison Square Garden. I was screwed out of my World Television Championship. I am used to the rules changing and the goalpost shifting when it comes to Shang T and Ring of Honor. It's the fact that it was you. It's the fact that this was a man that I sat down and I talked about being a father with, talked about goals, dreams, and ambitions with hell. We even sat down and cried about the deaths of our mothers. This is supposed to be my brother. And what makes it worse, this is now the example that you've set for your daughter. This is now the man that you've shown the world that your mother raised. And all for what? The World Tag Team Championships? Sold your soul too cheap, homie. Because what you did deserves revenge. It deserves me taking my crew, walking right up Mount Olympus, and wrecking shop to the point that Zeus himself is on his knees begging us to stop. But if I do that, then I can't be the man. I can't be the father. I can't be the mentor, the leader that I promised I'd become. For now, Kenny, I'm gonna stall you out. For now, Kenny, you get a pass. And as long as you stay on your side of the street, you'll be safe. But come back over to my side of the street. Force me back into that mentality. Kenny. I'm gonna make your mother cry for you. So we literally always have stuff going on. And of course, one of the most informative is the ROH Strong Podcast, which drops every Monday, hosted by Kevin Eck. We had Chris Hero on last week, which was sweet. And this week we got a little of the sour, as the latest guest is the voice of ROH, Bobby Cruz. Just kidding, Bobby. You know that I'd be lost without you. Bobby reflects on his many memorable moments as ROH ring announcer, including breaking into the company as Steve Carino's personal ring announcer, having a ringside seat for numerous classic matches, and getting a little too close to the action and incidents involving Jay Lethal and Necro Butcher. He also talks about his experience announcing for WWE, his relationship with Hall of Famer ring announcer Howard Finkel, and much more. So be sure to give it a listen. But that's not all. Remember, on our official YouTube page, there's also Technique Tuesdays with Joe Hendry, Throwback Thursday, The Honor List, and much, much more. And check out ShopHonor.com for new releases. ShopHonor.com is the mobile-friendly ROH store that's turning ordinary online shopping into an immersive experience. Shirts, collectibles, micro-brawlers, and more. Check it out. And if you think that's the extent of our content, you're kidding yourself, because Best on the Planet is our 24-7 streaming channel. You can find Best on the Planet in the live TV section of the Star or Plex apps, which are available in all major app stores. We just aired the 500th episode special last week, and you can expect more specials and original content on Best on the Planet throughout the year. Download the Star or Plex apps now and share your thoughts and opinions on all things ROH in our Facebook group and hashtag Choose Your Honor. We're always listening. Remember when I said that there was going to be a big announcement today? Well, here we go. As you know, at the 19th anniversary, ROH Board of Directors member Maria Canellis Bennett announced that Ring of Honor will be holding a tournament this summer to crown a Ring of Honor Women's Division Champion. Well, 
We won't have to wait until this summer for brand new ROH Women's Division matches. Starting next Wednesday, April 28th, drum roll please, we begin Women's Division Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we'll debut a new match from the ROH Women's Division and get a chance to see some of the athletes that may very well end up as part of the tournament field. Newcomers to ROH, as well as ROH veterans, will have the opportunity to establish themselves and prove that they deserve entry into the Women's Championship Tournament this summer. So get ready for the debut of Women's Division Wednesday, premiering next Wednesday right here on our Ring of Honor Wrestling YouTube channel. With that said, let's take it to our exclusive match. It's Joe Keys versus the Beer City Bruiser, and I fear for Joe's life just a little bit because Bruiser literally tried to kill a person with a beer bottle. Like, subscribe, tell all your friends. I'm Quinn McKay, and I'll see you next week on Week by Week. Welcome everyone to this exclusive week by week encounter. Ian Riccoboni, Caprice Coleman on the call for this one. Caprice, we're gonna see a clash of styles here today in Baltimore, a fighter versus a pure wrestler. Absolutely, Hold the Beer City beer. Bruiser has Watch a brand this. new attitude and I'm kind of looking forward to see it. I think it's been a long time coming. We'll see if that attitude translates into wins a little bit more vicious, a little bit more focused on winning at any cost. And let's focus on Bobby Cruz. This is an ROH week by week exclusive match, set for one fall for the 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring, wrestling out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Weight 343 pounds. He is representing the boxers, the Beer City Bruiser. We've seen a new side caprice of the Beer City Bruiser as of late. Absolutely, man. This guy, he is not pulling punches anymore. Time he's ready to win. Fight. And he's tired of drinking with people that he's lost with. He says, I'm here to fight. And he, you know what? The person that he's fighting, I hope he has the keys to unlock the door because Joe Keys is the one that's going to go against him. You know, there's three things I like in this world. Good cardio with a pre-match cigar, an ice-cold beer, and my fist punching someone right in the mouth. <laughs> Joe Keys. You're trained in that pure professional wrestling style. At the dojo, that's what they're teaching you kids, and, and that's good. But tonight, you're stepping into my bar. And at my bar, you fight to earn your keep. And Joe Key's a very competent and capable pure wrestler. He focuses on submissions, but he's done a lot of high impact moves too. Don't mistake Joe Keys for somebody that can't fight. The flying headbutt, the strikes. I don't know how smart it is to get into a punching contest with Beer City Bruiser, but I think he'll be able to at least keep up with them here today in Baltimore. His opponent, wrestling out of the ROH Dojo, weighing 203 pounds, Joe Keys. Every time I see this young man, he looks better and better. And Joe Keys, and there you see the Beer City Bruiser. Keys is walking out, a man determined. Now I get it, because I'm one of Gresham's kids. All I'm, you know, viable for is wrist locks and takedowns and fancy roll-ups. I, I get that, and this isn't pure rules match. This is the fight if you want to, Bruiser. And I know you don't wrestle the way I do, but I can promise you one thing. If you back me into a corner, I'm gonna fight my way out. And if you take me lightly, you might just find yourself knocked out. Your keys, huh? challenge unsuccessful for the Pure Championship what? came a lot closer, I think, than I most people expected. Oh, no man, he carried Gresham to the end. Oh, oh wow. Code of Honor adhered to. Did you what? see knee, his huh? knees buckle, Keys' knees buckle? No! And a body shot. That's, that's early involuntary yeah. actions right there when your knees buckle, Riccoboni. And this is on, years Joe. of frustration just being channeled through the yeah. right hands of the Beer City Bruiser. Looks for the Irish whip, hangs onto the wrist. This is that pure wrestling, a great use of it to counter some of the strength of Bruiser. And this isn't a pure match, so Keys is going to take it to the five count in the ropes. Yeah, I wanted to see what Keys was going to do when Bruiser grabbed the roots, but Keys stayed on him, and that's what you have to do with Bruiser. Look for a backslide, changes the plan, knee to the midsection. Oh, and this is going to be tough here. Yeah, he's not going to be able to get him off his feet that easily. It's going to be a lot for Keys to get Bruiser off his feet. And if he stays this close to him, he's going to be in trouble. Yeah. 
picks him up. Down he goes. You have a time limit when you're working bigger guys to where you can stay around them. If you stay around them close enough for them to grab you, you, you stay too long. Here's his cruiser misses with the elbow. Speaking of time limits, 10 minute time limit for this week by week encounter. Keys delivers on the Beer City Bruiser. Now, if I'm Joe Keys, I'm going to try my best to keep Bruiser on the mat, not to let Bruiser stand up. And he likes that Boston Crab. He's looking to go turn him over here. Look at to twist the legs, but that's nearly 400 pounds. Wow. Beer City Bruiser gets to the ropes. This is the advantage of it not being a pure match because this is the second time in less than two minutes that Bruiser has already grabbed uh, the ropes. Wow. And I love Joe Keys, the aggressiveness that we're seeing here. He's going in with a guy who's been in Ring of Honor for the last five, six years, and, and he has no fear at all. But, but Joe Keys has been around for a long time, and I think he takes these opportunities to prove that he needs to stay. What? Is he biting him? Oh, come on. Wow. Oh, come on. Those sharpened canine teeth. Oh! He just stamped his hand. Kick to the midsection. Joe Keys firing back now. Forearm delivers. Just forearms right to the ear. Now you blow an eardrum that way. The rest of the match, Bruiser's hearing the siren in his head. That's what kept dragging Leon action required it, surgery. It will do it. It's that ring that you cannot get used to. Beer City Bruiser has Keys in a precarious position. Ooh. Legs tied up. Great counter by yep. Keys. Trying to fish and claw his way, and he does. Gets to the ropes. Forces Bruiser to break it. Cross body. Bruiser drives him into the barricade. Bruiser using Keyes' own weight and momentum to drive him into those yeah. reinforced barricades. Yeah, he had enough to keep him from taking him over and just drove him down the rest of the way. I'll give him this. It's a fight. It's not going to be pretty coming from Bruiser. He's here to hurt you. And Bruiser bringing Keyes back up to his feet. Bruiser driving Keyes into the wow. ring post. See, anytime I see somebody uh, head driven into the ring pose, it's, it's hard to find a purpose for that because it's, it's still meat and bone. It, it hurts bad. Bruiser getting into the ring. I think back to Bruiser's first tour with Ring of Honor New Japan. I think back to the viciousness when he was still associated with Silas Young. Ooh. He's trying to fight back out. And that, that viciousness, that killer instinct. Seems to be re-emerging. It's reappearing as of late. He, he feels like he needs it. Let's just see how. Wow! That's Bruiser it. has has That's adapted it. to using his the ring as a weapon. Like you hitting somebody with that uh, that corner poster, you might as well hit him with a chair. Mm -hmm. Hit him with the rings is, is the same thing. Cover two. Just a two count there. And keys are some of the finest conditioning in professional wrestling. You're Going to take a little bit more to keep Joe Keys down. Maybe a high-impact maneuver. Sends him down. Great use of the leverage point of the inside of the knee. So that's the thing about Bruiser, man. He's also a great technical wrestler. He just uses it when he wants to. He uses it to his advantage when he wants to. When you're trained by Harley Race, that's something that you got to know. You become almost an amateur physiologist, knowing the pressure points of the body as you see the nerve hole right here. <laughs> Harley Race is like the Cobra Kai of pro wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> and Keyes trying to break the grip. He does. Reestablishes a vertical base. Kick to the midsection. Joe Keyes front face lock here. It's Keyes looking for a suplex. Oh, God. I saw that block. One, two, unforced error from Joe Keyes. It's going to take a lot from Joe Keys to recover from that because that hurts your back, and then he lands on your bread basket, so it knocks the wind out of you. Oh, wow. God! Pump handle. 180. Down goes Joe Keys. Hooks the leg. Two. Wow. I think Bruce is going to try to put him away now, Rick Abani. He's got, he's got Keys hurt, so I want to see how Bruce is going to try to put him away. And that's that high-impact move that I was talking about. To beat Keys, you gotta gotta get his wind. You gotta knock the wind out of him. Gotta slow him down. He knocked the wind out of him twice. So let's see if he's able to capitalize. It's over, son. Saying it's over. If he hits this, it's over. 
Yeah. And Bruiser. Oh, gets out of it. Gets out of it. Shows Joe Keys us his homework. Sure does. The uppercut. Keys, second rope on the inside. Sunset flip. It's too much time. Bruiser yep. around the throat. Let's go. Bruiser, Leading him back to his feet. And Beer City looking for the choke slam, but wait a minute. He's got the choke on, brings him down. Looking for the body scissors, the, the front face lock here. Well, he's got him trapped here, and there's nowhere for Bruiser to go if he keep those legs tied in. He's got some daylight here. You see him moving that neck, creating some space, Bruiser. Bruiser's trying to get to his feet. And he does. Key's not letting go, though. And this time it's Bruiser. Now they're in a neutral position. Uh, wow! Big time suplex from Joe Keyes. You remember Keyes tried that earlier and he was not able to do it. Third time is the charm for Joe Keyes. And now Keyes with some daylight emerging. Bruiser staggering. You see him going forward, though. Normally, yep. you see somebody going back. He's trying well, to catch his wind. He's, he's catching his wind and supporting his own body weight the best he can. Bruiser is trying to stay on his feet at this moment. Up and over. This speaks to the superior conditioning of Joe. Keys, Keys delivers a forearm. Second rope on the outside. It's Bruiser who catches Keys. Shot to the lower back, but it's Keys firing back. A lot of fight in Keys. I love the heart of Joe Keys. Second row back on the outside here. Oh. Keys is in a bad way. He's trapped, he's off balance, and he's hot. Gonna see just what that jaw is made out of. Is it steel or glass? We're gonna find out what Bruiser has in mind here. Second rope on the inside for Bruiser on the outside. Keys, shots to the obliques, headbutts on Bruiser. Shoves him down, creates space, needs the opening here. High cross body. Keys with the momentum. Wow. And sets Bruiser down. You have to believe that Keys is wearing Bruiser down. Everything that he tries offensively, he's able to connect and get. And he loves this flying headbutt. This oh. could be it. This could be it. That turnover by Bruiser was a choice. He's turning over, so Keys has to turn him over to get a count. He has to shoot the half yeah, here. He has to turn. So this is giving Bruiser time to recover. That's intentional by Bruiser. Cover. Two. Oh, and he yep. bought himself enough time. That's a veteran move by yep. the Beer City Bruiser. That's, that's one thing Bruiser does. It makes it hard to beat you because if he's hurt, he's going to belly out and you can't turn him over. <laughs> and that is a large man to have to turn over. There you see it week by week. We want to thank you so much for joining us this week. Ian Rigamani, Caprice Coleman on the call. This week by week exclusive. Joe Keyes looking to pick up a huge single victory over the Beer City Bruiser who's turned a new leaf. Oh. Not necessarily a good one. Off the ropes. Keys. Oh, oh no, he's caught. He's caught. Beer City. Oh my. DDT yep. plants him. That's it. Yep. And it's over. Hold my beer. Watch this. The winner of this match, the Beer City Bruiser. Well, that was a heck of a fight, Caprice. Absolutely. And Keys stayed in it the whole time. We're gonna take a look now at the replay. Here you see off the ropes, catches him, going for that lariat maybe one too many times, and plants a Beer City DDT. Taking the plunge into the Great Lakes is key. Oh, come on. What? Code of Honor. Did he shake his hair? Like, what did he do? Maybe adhere to Beer City. This is not a Beer City Bruiser I'm used to seeing, but I can get used to seeing Beer City Bruiser win, and that's what he did. Uh, we know he's been on the winning end of things as of late. Oh, oh. And he's going to celebrate. That's a Beer City Brew. Not really. Uh, we've heard the expression, light the victory cigar. And he's got the Beer City Brew, and I, I had the same perhaps suspicious feelings that Eric Martin, Kent Dixon, and Dante Caballero had. And, and Kent Dixon gets the Beer City Brew. You can just beat him and that's it? Let's talk about What are you trying to do? 
Talk about to to all the dojo guys out here. here. Huh? 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 We're trying to talk? Come on, Ken, let's talk about you this. You want to try to Taking talk now, right? It's good to see these guys take up for each other, man. That's kind of what they need to do. Let's Love talk. to see it. Oh! God! What the hell was that? Dixon has always had the renegade mentality, but I didn't think he would turn against his own dojo brothers. Are you kidding me? That's his tag team. Oh, oh God. my God. Dixon. Kidney. Has taken up Caballero and Martin. Oh, yeah. Smashing the beer bottle on Dante. Do you know how many miles these guys have ridden together? How many hotel rooms these guys have shared? And he just turned his back on them? He's standing beside Bruiser like he's supposed to. And, and for what? I don't know, but Bruiser isn't pushing him away. Ooh. Eric Martin on the outside. Bruiser, that's enough. How many times? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh! Oh, God! <laughs> Eat it. Welcome to my bar. Man. And that is I know it's not a party. That is concrete that? on the other side of the What's barricade. That? Celebration, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're ever going to have a drinking buddy, you oh, have somebody yeah. to drink with with the same mentality. Yeah, Ken boy. Dixon has proven he has the same this. mentality as I Bruiser like does. This. Ken Dixon yeah, turning his back on Joe Keys, oh, Dante Caballero, oh, and Eric oh, Martin. Oh, and... And now, are, are, is this a new alliance? Is, is this that, a new team? Is that what we were supposed to assume? Fans, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week right here on Week by Week. Happy wrestling. I got I to gotta hey, figure out what's going on here. I guess we'll see you in the future.